Now, here comes the music. Good day, everyone. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock, or maybe a minute or two after. And it is the one question I always ask. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. <laughs> and of course, his buddy with the DJ roundtable. I see DJ Brantley. He has his uh, assistant, as usual, in the background, <laughs> yeah. giving her own spin and giving bunny ears to her dad. <laughs> <laughs> and it just shows you that we are all working DJs. We have families. We have friends. We have everything else like everyone else. Uh, and we go week to week, uh, gigs to gigs, and uh, you know have different uh, aspects of things. So it's, it's um, one of those things that... Uh, we um, work very, very hard at, and uh, we go every week. And speaking of working very hard, um, I can't tell you uh, how much I appreciate people putting comments down in the uh, YouTube comment area. And one of the things I sent you guys a um, a comment and a kind of a question from uh, one of our uh, one of our watchers, and uh, he was uh, saying that. Uh, uh, Bad Bunny definitely, uh, uh, definitely the floor filler for 2022, and he's getting a lot of requests. What's called Miami Freestyle, which Latin Freestyle, which is I'm as a Chicagoan, that's what I started DJing with was Freestyle. So that's you know Johnny O, Cynthia, that stuff right there has been really popular down there, and uh, it seems that uh, it's popular with those from the 30s up to the 50s. So I, I, the question I have for you guys, again, this is going back to what we had uh, our watcher uh, ask and say and give comment to. And, um, are you guys seeing stuff? And we were just talking a little before the show started about 90s stuff. And we see it kind of shifting a little bit to later 90s, early 2000s. But what, uh, what do you go into grab bag and pull out that's a kind of a throwback to – maybe when you're in high school or maybe when you're in grade school or that you throw out there that people still go out there and dance, and have fun to it. I mean, wow. yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll maybe start us off on that. Uh, I'm kind of in a weird, I'm kind of in a weird predicament in my situation. Uh, my sister is nine years older than me. Um, her era was when she was in high school, she was uh like a two thousand, like the two thousands hits, like all your classic, like Nelly, um, Young Jock, like all those guys, um, all your uh, Panic at the Disco, Fall Out Boy, um, <laughs> all American Rejects, all those kinds of groups. Um, she influenced me to all of those. Let's just say I was like the kindergartner singing like all the words to My Humps by the Black Eyed Peas in the back of her car. Like I was that kid. Um, and that actually has gotten me at a lot of events because they look at me and they get so confused. Like, how do you know all of this awesome music and stuff like that? And I'll be like, well, I was influenced by my sister, yada, yada. And they're like, holy cow, that's awesome. I've actually gotten at least five events from having knowledge in that 2000 genre, whether it's that hip hop, pop, rock, whatever, um, just based on that. So I can thank my sister for that one. But um, that's my go-to, honestly. A lot of times, uh, for certain crowds, is just hitting them with the 2000s, things like that, working our way into the 2010s, depending on how young the crowd is. Um, maybe going back into the 90s, but and then of course your staples like 70s, 80s. But yeah. Okay. DJ Bradley, you're muted. You muted yourself. <laughs> I got it. Now that you know, when I you're saw, making, I saw about... you thinking. I saw you thinking you muted yourself. You're like, wow, you muted yourself. <laughs> I didn't want to say the wow loudly, but yeah. <laughs> thinking back to high school, what was really popular, and this was, you know, three years into MTV or so, maybe. So in that era, you and okay, one that will definitely hold hold the test of time is Love Shack. That was in the first five, six years of the MTV era. <clears throat> and in that era, you know, in all of that as well, you had hair metal that was dominating everything from Living Color to Bon Jovi, Skid Row, even, you know, the one hit wonders like Ugly Kid Joe, uh, the Bullet Boys. And those were, I mean, that's all anything in Chicago radio was playing back then or the 80s kind of, you know, 
Diamond Girl freestyle that Joe Bo and uh, Jump and Julian Perez used to play on B96. There wasn't, and then, you know, obviously, what was it? GCI had R&B, but it was definitely a different era of for R&B back then. There weren't any real bangers, if I can really, Joy and Pain maybe, but a lot more of it was step music. We're going to step and get our groove on. So that was the three major markets of Chicago. So when it comes back into weddings of that, by all means, uh, Bon Jovi, uh, God, I, we used <laughs> The Bon jo- I can't even think of the name of it now. And it, it, because it's one of those songs I actually loathe, but you've got that or Motley Crue, uh, Kickstart My Heart. Girls, Girls, Girls. Yeah. There, there's a bunch of stuff from the the rock bands. The, and I, I think you're thinking of uh, Tin Spin and Shomer. He was more of the freestyle. Yeah. More than uh, Perez, more of a. Uh, D- uh, Julian Jumper Perez, which I know he was running for alderman in the city of Chicago. I yeah. don't know what happened with that, but uh, he, uh, when he was DJing on B96, uh, WBBM in uh, Chicago, 96.3, uh, he was more house, more progressive house. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Tim Spin and Schomer, he was always one of those guys who did the more freestyle stuff. And I, I always, I always loved his mixes because that was what I was into, but it's, it's interesting because uh, the reason why I asked this, and I'm going to ask Cool Thing the same thing, the stuff that he does. Uh, the wedding this past weekend, uh, we had a lot, lot EDM beginning, and then, but the later half was kind of early, mid '80s and early '80s, and a little bit of late '80s, uh, kind of first wave uh, synth pop. So you're talking, you know, stuff that is like. Berlin, and you're talking stuff like that. It that's has this, I feel. What? And that's what I was at Medusa's with, because in the video room, it was all alternative dance or goth music. So you had Susie, the Sisters, the Cure, the Smiths. And right along, alongside of that, I'm playing New Order, Joy Division, Skinny Puppy, Ministry before they became industrial, when they were still synth pop. And like Nitzareb, 242, KMFDM, and all of that era was that. I mean, so between the two, like that era of music, I couldn't even fathom bringing into a wedding. So here, but oh like, yeah, it, 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 this but this Saturday, the the crowd was there, and that's the parents wanted, and it was it was interesting. I did the more popular ones, stuff that you you know hear more in mainstream forty. I didn't yeah. do like you know Nitzareb uh, joint a chant or something like that. That's more of a, you know, that, that right there. If you, uh, if you guys haven't heard that one before, uh, I definitely recommend uh, at least going to YouTube and listening to Nitzareb joint in the chant. It is a very interesting song, to say the least. Um, he constantly repeats the same things over and over again. You know, he'll, he'll it's the same word. He'll go over and over again to the beat. And lies, lies, cold. guns, guns. Go with it. Yeah. Fire, 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 uh. fire. Yeah. But I, that I, is. I, I wonder that's where. Um, I, I wonder if that's where they got the uh, whole entire fire thing for. Uh, um, uh, for Beavis and Butthead, you know, <laughs> kind of. A, like where he got it from that, from Nitzarab. I just wonder, you know, it's like. Uh, well, and if you look at that era of music, it was the precursor to techno. Because shortly thereafter, in the same alternative clubs, you had them playing songs like, you know, from Shaman, The Bouncer, Moby, Fat Boy Slim, and that's or and the last Vegas or the dirty the dirty Vegas or uh, Days Go By is where those are big Vegas, claim yeah. to fame. But that <laughs> all was the precursor to what became techno and the modern era of dance music. Oh yeah, and you start they start getting if you go to that br- that branch there, you go a little further. You start getting into, uh, you know, uh, Dead Mouse. You start getting into yep. stuff like that. The more the trance, long play songs, you know, uh, like Concrete Angel. If you listen to the rec- original track, Concrete Angel, it's six and a half minutes long. I love playing that whole track because it is it's just a, a great song. Uh, uh, Cascade and uh, Dead Mouse. Uh, I remember the original track. It's like five minutes and fifty seconds. It's a long <laughs> track. That's two minutes for me now. Wow. If I, it's the, the vocal part, the drop, we're out. That's it. 
Well, yeah, you're you're 30 seconds, so <laughs> <laughs> your crowd is your crowd is your crowd will not like me DJing at your at your bar. Uh, DJ cool thing, I gotta ask you. Um, is there songs that you go back to? You go up into your magic bag, and I know you have a little problem right now with some software, and you, your your music is uh, kind of in limbo right now. But uh, at your gigs you've done um, in the past, is there stuff you go in your magic bag and grab out of that you want you heard in high school, or that you heard in grade school that you pull out and throw down? And you know, like at, when you do the Fourth of July party at uh, the uh, fireworks uh, store. Or yeah. if you do uh, like your uh, New Year's Eve party, or and I know you got your uh, your union coming up. Is there stuff that you're going to yeah. pull out for that? Well, I definitely want to play some Black Eyed Peas, like Boom Boom Pow. I got a feeling because that was popular when I was a freshman in high school. Grade school would be like um, <laughs> the early to mid two thousands, like two th- anything like anything that's upbeat from two thousand to 2006 the summer of 06 so anything from there would be perfect for going back to and like a throwback so uh braylon you've been listening to me uh, talk a little bit about older stuff and yeah i I saw you over thinking what's your what's your thought a little bit you got you got (laughs) no so ton of those ton of those uh groups i have heard of for sure um I've been influenced on the rock side of things uh, just a little bit because my brothers were in like a decently well-known rock band back in like the early 2000s. They uh, they won uh, like the VH1 Bands on the Run show that they had for like there one season. Go. They actually ended up winning it, but they have introduced me to so much like rock and stuff like that. So, but I always hear like older bands. That's why I was like thinking of all the names that you were talking about, older groups, older bands. I was like, okay, some of those I know, some of those I don't. I'm like, I got to look these up later, but um, <laughs> I always love being like introduced to stuff that like, that was like older. That was like, oh, this wave was amazing and stuff like that. Or this really was a new wave of this. I love hearing those kinds of groups to like, just better understand crowds and all that. And that's, that's always the interesting thing. And you know, the other interesting thing um, I want to talk about is uh, about the, vi- uh, about the show here. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to the channel and make sure you go to everyone else's YouTube channel here. Cause they all have YouTube channels. They put a lot of work in their effort. I know uh DJ cool thing, uh, Hunter, he goes live a lot of times. Uh, you, mm-hmm. you can sit there and chill with him and talk to him and, uh, just, you know, one thing is always be respectful for anything, any comments or anything like that. But if we want, I want to hear your comments in my channel. I want to hear your comments, your critiques, your criticisms, Anything you want to say, say it down there. If you put a thumbs down on the, on the video, tell me why. Well, tell me what you don't like. If you know if something you don't like, you know maybe we could change something. I want to make sure this is a great thing for everyone and you enjoy yourself here. And if you're watching the show here and you're watching up to here, I- I'm glad. Thank you so much. And again, if you get a chance to, put down in the comments that uh, something funny happened. You know, I can't believe that uh, Hunter did that with that piece of paper or... Uh, you know, Braylon was like, wow, I, that's a, that's a mind nugget. I never thought I'd get from him or something like that. You know, put something funny down there and people are like, oh, I gotta watch the whole video. It helps, uh, it helps out the algorithm for the channel. It helps the channel grow. And again, thank you guys for subscribing. If you subscribe to the channel, I appreciate it. If you get a chance to come over on Tuesday night onto Twitch and watch it live. We're here on live right now on Twitch. And you know what? I forgot to do. I apologize, you guys on Twitch. I forgot to move my Twitch over here. And we have, uh, let's see here, uh, Adrian E is here. Uh, and then we, I have another one. Dead Mouse is crazy sick. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. And I see a spam person here. And uh, yeah, I hate that when people spam. I know. I get that all the time on my YouTube channel. I was like, who is this person? Who is that person? Yeah, I just got to get rid of them real quick. Yeah. But yeah, at my at most of my gigs, you know, going back to what we were talking about, I do play a lot of 2000s hip-hop because it's like four, like dance floor fillers. A lot of hip-hop going on with the bass. <laughs> you really can't go wrong with that that genre, especially right now. Um, just tons of good hits. 
and you can fluctuate between like your kind of like lower like 90s 80s like bpms <laughs> to work your way up to like kind of like that no man's land in like the hundreds um and then of course with the pop and stuff like that for especially the 2000s and like the quote-unquote like start of edm kind of stuff bump your way up to the, like to, to the 120s 130s but so I, i'm getting told 2000s where it's at right now and i can tell you uh, the wedding i had on new year's eve after the ball dropped, uh, we well actually the balloons were opened up, and I got a video up there. Uh, unfortunately, one pack of balloons didn't want to open up for tracing. She actually ha- cut her hand with a rope. Um, the the company that did the balloons left the safety pin inside there, and uh, their she was pulling really hard, and she actually cut her hand on the rope. But uh, it, it eventually they got n- knocked down and opened. But I started that with uh, sandstorm. And went from sandstorm into, yeah. and I dropped right into uh, ghosts and stuff. So it was all the early night, early two thousands EDM yeah. feel that gave that yeah. great feel. So you're going there, and then I did, you know, uh, remember I was going a whole entire. The BPMs are all very similar there. They're all at one twenty eight, one thirty, and I did a whole a set of like five songs of, of that era. And people were out there jamming, having fun, and they were like, you know, this is like stuff they remember, but. Uh, I did the drop at mid right at midnight. So you have that drop and that silent start with you start hearing the synthesizer going and you hear do 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 later on, like you know, in a few seconds. So I did that right at midnight and it just basically everyone was like cheering and having fun. Then they realized what was happening. They're like, oh my God, it, it's a great reaction. And that's that's sneaking in those little nuggets like that into stuff, you know, when I could sneak those stuff into a wedding. It to me it just uh, it's great because I've done that a few times with you know dropping uh, sandstorm in a few weddings and people are just you know they you know hear that and they're like oh my god and they go crazy over it and the wedding Saturday um, I actually did uh, uh, Timmy trumpets uh, freaks because the bride had a couple of Timmy trumpet stuffs and I'm like okay I, I played one of the songs she wanted. Then all of a sudden I went into the freaks and you know how it starts to go da 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 the synthesized like kind of trumpet thing. Then you hear the guy rapping about the speakers, the treble, and uh, I mean uh, the the bass uh, from the tweeters make, make the speakers go to the war. Yeah. Oh, the mighty trumpet, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. Then yeah. That. Oh, and then all of a sudden, oh. where the freaks at? Where the freaks at? Oh, and, oh. and when the bass dropped, and people were just jumping up and down, they're like you know how a whole entire crowd of people jump up and down. So yeah, it's, it, it's having that <laughs> understanding of that EDM, having an understanding of that music. I, again, that, that's early on, and again, that's 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 two thousands. But yet later on, when the parents wanted to dance, do the whole entire eighty set for basically an hour of playing stuff like you know uh, that you'd hear in eighty four, eighty five, eighty six. That good synth pop stuff, stuff you'd hear <laughs> from you know Pretty in Pink and stuff like that, and you know uh, you know Psychedelic Furs and stuff like that. It, it, it's it's one of the things having a depth of knowledge I think helps a lot. And knowing stuff and knowing different genres. Cause they're in, you know, I was playing some country stuff, one man playing country, one man playing that. But it's it's one of the things having that fun and able to take from there. And I will leave you on this one right here. Um when I was trying out, when I always test sound, I always test my my system for music. I always use Metallica Inter Sandman because it's done before compression. It has vocals, it has guitar, it has bass kick. It has, you know, a bass drum. It has a lot of there to listen to the sound or full round range sound. And that's my test song. So I go into it and I was get, I was going. And then when it gets into the, uh, just before the part where you start singing, you know, the prayer, um, I went from that into the remix uh, of Flowers for Miley Cyrus. And this is what I'm testing. And the girls are standing there. First, they're, uh, they're all lined up getting pictures taken. They're all like bouncing their, their bouquets and stuff like that, having fun. And all of a sudden, one of the flowers remix from Miley Cyrus, they're like, oh my God, you went from 80s metal, you know, to Miley Cyrus 2023 remix, same, basically same BPM 128. And they were just like, wow. And they were having fun. They were like laughing. They're like, it's the best ever. They're like, I never even thought of anything like that. And that's why I like that kind of like, Make people stop and think for music. So my next question to you guys, getting into it, do you ever do that? Do you ever like trick your audience? I can't say trick is a bad word, but kind of trick and treat them, kind of 
give them something that they weren't used to hearing or something they haven't heard in a while and then mix it over to something totally different. Again, go from Metallica to Miley Cyrus. You know, again, Flowers remix. I troll a lot, a lot. Uh, it, part of being the third, you know, here, I'm only playing 30 seconds to two minutes of a song. You have to be able to quick, you know, get out of the song. And like, uh, who put it up this week? The Party in the USA into Britney, oops. I've been playing with that for a couple of years now. It's a great little, okay, as soon as he does as the, as a Britney song was on, loop the Britney song, drop in, oops, I did it again. It's a pretty cute transition. But things like that, or um, either Nick or Spinelli or even Steve, uh, Steve Rodan out of Milwaukee, they both have their version of uh, let's get it started into everybody. You're covering two kind, you know, about a 10 year, you know, age difference in the songs, and everybody knows them both. Doing that, or the one DJ who did turn down for what into Dancing Queen. Dude was a genius because I mean that that can go so many different ways. I've done that in the Shania Twain man, I feel like a woman, just because I was feeling silly one night. And yeah. but you could take that anywhere. You could even do turn down to what and only do the you know, until the drop and then play get low right after it. There's just so many options you have with trickery like that. Oh, yeah. They're just the crowd engaged. That's why. They're, all, they're, they're yelling at me in the chat saying, tease. It's called a tease in the crowd. And, you yeah. know, it, it's different terminologies for different areas. But, yeah, that that trickery, and again, I, I kind of use that word loosely, um, not as a mean thing, but as a good thing to, to make them psych them out a little bit. And, and uh, DJ Cool Thing, you, you're going to say something? Yeah, I just heard Dancing Queen on Sirius XM 7 and I was jamming in the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, the well, Scooter well, remix is like, it's a short, a quick oh, edit. Yeah. It's got the I verse, the chorus. <clears throat> it's and he, yeah, his, it's all you need. You get the verse, the chorus, and we're done with that. Let's move on. Right. So I, I, I don't know why I think like that so much, but every time I get after a first chorus, I just want to be done with it. I'm getting bored all. And it could be the generation I DJ for and even watching them and how their moves change. Yeah, but yeah. I'm getting uh yes, that that is uh, that guy that did uh, from turn on to what into dancing queen was epic. <laughs> and again, thank you guys for watching the show too. I really do appreciate you guys watching and uh and be, being here and being part of the show. And thank you for answering a- asking questions and answering things and correcting us too. <laughs> and uh, if you excuse me for my cough, it's still for me being sick uh, three weeks ago. It's just, it's just my cough just won't leave me. Uh, it, it always happens every time I'm sick. So I'm not sick. So no one out there, don't worry. Oh, my God, buddy's sick. No, buddy's not sick. Buddy is just has his cough that lingers for whatever reason. Just lots of fun. Um, so, but it, it's having those kind of nuggets, that kind of thing is always a fun thing to do. And when you do that kind of stuff and you have that kind of play with your audience and you have people in there, you kind of have in your palm, your hands, and you can say, Hey, where do we want to go with this and see what happens? Um, you know, when you do, when you do that and you have them and you have them in the place you want to, what I'm going to say, what treat do you give them? What, what, what song do you go to? You reach out in that bag again, going back to that magic bag and what treat do you pull out and put on that that turntable or on that on that controller and play that that's one song that just makes them like oh my god this is the best DJ ever? How about you, cool thing? We'll start with you. I don't know. I got so many great songs hard to choose. I know so many great songs. Do you want me to come back to you? <laughs> I guess it would be. Um... It's going down by Young Jock, or that's one I would say. That's a Young Dro. I'd say that one. I'd say that Young Jock definitely is a good one. Um, Something I like to do. I mean, we all probably do it. But if there's a song that necessarily you're, if you're trying like changing BPMs and like you're not trying to make it blend, but you want to put an emphasis on like what's coming next, kind of deal. Just let that echo just go 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 and then really drop in young jocks a good one to drop 
Um, I would also say uh, a lot of people also like to hear uh, that I, whenever I get a big reaction from a <clears throat> uh, wipe me down, uh, what was that like Lil Boozy or whatever? Um, that's a really big one that people like. But one thing that I like to do, there's a good mix that I like to, and they, they're perfect because they're around the same BPM. Um, if you go from Wannabe by the Spice Girls, you know what, 95, 96, 1995, 1996, into uh, Hollaback Girl, Gwen Stefani, 2005, 2006, same BPMs, it merges so well. And if you're aiming at the ladies, which a lot of times us DJs do, we aim at the ladies because if the girls are dancing, the guys will follow. Um, hit that. And then if you really want to just kind of like throw them for a loop and really make the girls go crazy, you play those two songs, you let it echo out again, let it echo, echo. And then you, of course, drop, man, I feel like a woman. Dun, 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 dun. And then all the girls will just go, let's go, girls. And they just go crazy. So. <laughs> See, after I play Shania, that one song, I will drop Footloose. Because oh, in that I same, I will play that same yeah. pattern you're playing there a little bit, except I'll take out Holla Bat Girl because I want to save that till later in the night. When the older folks are gone and I can play the dirty version. True. But that one. I will drop like wannabe, like uh, my ideal like opening set at a wedding. If I have to play Cupid Shuffle, it's going first. We're just going to get that out of the way. I will echo out the very end of Cupid Shuffle, drop wannabe, drop man, I feel like a woman, drop footloose. And then I'm going to get a good read on everybody. Like you play something from three different decades, different genres. Uh, and if Footloose goes right, I'll drop Outcast into Shake It Off. And then I'll see where I've got to keep on the, sh- on the Shake It, on the Shake It, I'm assuming. Shake It, Shake It, Yarrow. Yeah, don't yeah. you make okay, sure you Yeah. 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 Okay, Footloose. There you oh, go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get the I, vinyl. That's the color vinyl. Oh, wow. Pink color vinyl, huh? All right. I like it. So the question here is uh, from uh, from our chat. Uh, do you guys go for the older crowd first, or is that what you open yes. the opening set? I always yes. cater to the older <laughs> older crowd. I 100% do. Um, I always tell my couples that. I say, hey, guys, I just give them a heads up. I say, hey, usually the best way to work is your older couples are going to leave <laughs> earlier let the younger crowd get some drinks into more and then we go heavy in on the on the younger stuff later on <laughs> except this weekend this group was a party group they were a young group they almost didn't allow me to play anything older than 96 that is just I a had, dream i had to no i'm i'm telling you and it was an amazing wedding it was awesome i mean the reactions and like it was just it was it was a great wedding but let me tell you, I had like a few adults. Can you play some more older country? And I'm like, I like I nicely said to them, I was like, I'm gonna try to fit it in, I promise. But like, do you see my dance floor right now? And they just turned around and they go, All right, I get it. <laughs> like it was funny. Yeah, you know, we actually have a kind of music that's really, really popular here in Myrtle Beach. It's called Carolina Shag. Which is like 50s, 60s, and 70s R and B, which is we call Carolina Shag, like beach music. Okay. And it's really, really popular. Here. That stuff's a good time. I'll agree, Hunter. That stuff's a good time. So Adrian E says in most cases I go with the older crowd, and it will depend on what the crowd looks like. And that's kind of the thing I, I kind of look at is you kind of size up the crowd. Plus, like Saturday's wedding, a lot of older people stayed later um because the fact that they heard stuff earlier that they had fun with and they were enjoying themselves and it wasn't a huge wedding it was like i want to say 80 or 90 people it wasn't a huge wedding but they stayed later because the fact that they heard stuff and then when i got to that groove it was basically you know this is later on mostly older people but a lot of younger people came out and enjoyed it too because of stuff they you know they kind of dance with their parents with, or they dance, you know, when they were little kids at, you know, daddy daughter dance or, you know, mother son dance, you know, in, in grade school. And it, it, it's, it's, you know, it was fun seeing that interaction. And a lot of times I try and do newer stuff first is kind of wake them up. But sometimes with the crowd, it is good to start with the older stuff, start with some, some BGs and some disco right in the beginning and get that disco. And I don't know how you guys do the, the shuffles, the, the shot test slides, Cupid shuffles, so forth and so on. Do you guys 
I, I for me, I never do them back to back to back. If I'm gonna, if I do them, it's one here, one there. You know, I, I, I don't rely them as a as a crutch. I use them every so often, depending on and look request too and see what people request it. You know, usually Cha Cha Slide, Cupid Shuffle, those are the most requested ones. Electric Slides is probably number three. Um, and I always look at every request sheet and see it on there. I'll Cha Cha Slide, Cupid Shuffle, Cha Cha Cupid Shuffle. Um, I I try to get in there earlier with it, but the thing is that it all boils down to what is with the crowds. You know, how do you guys usually do your, you know, your slides? Like I said, I, I will, I don't try to, I intentionally try to avoid them at all costs unless they're on the must play. And if they are, I'm not going to play them back to back. I will try to do, if they, if they say you have to play, you know, YMCA, Cotton Eye Joe, Cupid, Cha Cha, and that whole array, I try to do about one an hour unless they're on the, you must play this and they've picked out all of them. Then it's going to be about two an hour. Like, and I'll, for example, with Wobble, I'll save that to, you know, like catering to the old folks early on. I try to, but you can definitely tell I'm just not your atypical wedding DJ. I'm dropping, I'm trying to mix my set. So I'm playing some contemporary pop with some of that older stuff for that first hour. And then I'm done with it. And a joke I'll make with, you know, even some of my wedding DJ friends is once I start, once I hit wobble, we're done doing any of the old stuff. I might have to come back to it once or twice, but more often than not, what I'm going to try to do there is wobble right into yeah, and then run like peas into everybody and start moving forward to getting to that sweet spot. I like to be at about 125 to 130. But that first hour, I will definitely keep the older folks in mind. And after that first hour, I'll even try to round it out with a slow song and then move on to like drop in Shaggy, It Wasn't Me, work my way into Wobble and push out. That's just how I've always kind of felt, you know, felt comfortable doing it. And with a lot of the couples that are grabbing me, they really don't want any of the old stuff. Like you said, you had that couple that asked you, can we play old stuff? And I will be very, like, a lot of the couples I get, they just say, they are very specific. We don't want X, Y, or Z. And you can tell them straight out, we said no. And I will literally leave my note with that. We said no, and there are must plays and do not plays in a real clear spot at my deck. So I'd be like, I'm sorry, I can't. And go on from there. Only a couple of times it's happened where they went down to the bride and asked. And... It, it was really, even the bride said, no, I could see her saying no. Her cousin got up and left after that because we, she didn't, but I'm on, and, and I will tell anybody who's asking me, you know, to play something off the do not playlist. Do you really want to bug her on her day? She already put it out here for a reason. It's her day. Let her have it. Let right. them get what they want. When you get married, you can call all the shots. Or if you have been, you already did. Let, and, 90% of the time, that works. It's very few people that will go down there. And whatever. I I think it's a waste of time to bother a bride with that, especially for a song. But some people are... Some, some people. Some people. Are hell-bent. Yep. What about, what yeah. about you, uh, Hunter? Cool thing. What do you... What do you... What was the question? Uh, the question the, was the uh, the slides. Do you play uh, them back to back, or do you have space between them? Yeah, well, I actually have. Space, yeah, I, yeah, I actually have spaces between them, but I actually wait until the dance floor is up and running, like with a lot of people on the dance floor. Then I play a slide. Sometimes I would just mostly go from cha cha slide into like the cupid shuffle, and then I would go back to the regular music, and then yeah, it would be like two, maybe one. Per hour. So I got a couple comments here. Uh, I usually was mostly on quinceaneras and close to the end of the party. I barely play it at, at, on weddings. And then lately, there is more couples trying to get away from traditional songs. They want something fresh. And that's, again, that, that that's why every, I'm sure you guys do the same thing. I treat every wedding different. You know, there's some things you do the same because the thing is that to make sure, you know, you ask a question, you post a question, do you want X, Y, Z? 
to make sure T's cross I's dotted. And you can tell people what you've done in the past, but every single wedding to me is a custom order. Yeah, you come in and go, okay, fine, great, I want you to DJ, but when you start getting down into it, um, it's kind of like going to a restaurant ordering, you order something off the menu, but then you start adding stuff. Look at it as a pizza. Yeah, some people just come in and just want a cheese pizza and be done with it, done and over with. Then there's some people come in, they want that special pizza. Oh, hey, I want, you know, I, I want mushrooms, I want whatever, onions, I want green peppers, I but they want a vet, they want this or they want that, they want sausage or whatever they want in the pizza, they customize it. So yeah, you have those 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 preset cheese pizzas, but then you start having those custom made ones. And I feel that that's kind of way we as a DJ we should be is customizing it for individuals. And, you know, it's it's one of the things that I try to put time in beforehand, going through the songs, you know, and looking through what they give me. And I use Vibo for my weddings, for uh, for my uh, brides and grooms. So I send them the link and I go through, the, I look at the Vibo app. I go online, I print, you know, uh, Tracy prints it out. We'll go through it. I'll go through the songs. And then when I'm looking at songs that they're requesting for certain areas, and I give them, you know, hey, give me 10, you have to hear songs. You know, I try and build off of that. But I also look at the other songs they pick for things because you get a lot of hints of what they like. They keep repeating the same stuff. Again, my bride Saturday, Susie, again, she wanted that EDM feel. And then again, I was supplementing stuff that, she didn't have her own list, but it was that same feel, that same feel and stuff. So it, it's 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 one of the things that you know when you do stuff, you prep and stuff like that. It's 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 always one of the things you want to do. But um, yeah, it, it's I should never have just a set playlist. Okay, you get playlist number two. Uh, what about you guys? We we got and one other thing thing is that the uh, there's a question posed: How many hours do you guys take to prep for a wedding? So I'm gonna go with Braylon here because I'm sure he's cut. He, he wants he wants to talk because I see him. <laughs> he's thinking, how many hours do you prep put in before you go to the wedding? I know how many hours I do. Yeah. Um. So I agree with you, buddy. That every single and I I try to pose this to my couples that every wedding is different. Um. With my paperwork and the way I have things laid out, I I show them how a lot of times weddings go. Like I ask for things, you know, like dance song parent dances cake cutting things like that but for a good amount of like the things i put optional and i always tell them is hey guys this is y'all's wedding no wedding should ever be the exact same and i believe in that um but i just try to make it easy for you for the planning process because some people this is like their first time getting married so they're like yeah i don't really know what to do and i i give this to them and they're like oh this is so helpful but then i'm like but remember you don't have to do everything in order the way that i have it please do what you want um but I will say, and I hope you guys agree with me, like when it comes to your like playlists or like your crates, whatever you want to call them, you have your stuff kind of organized and already set for yourself. So that way you can dive in and know where to go and things like that. So I'll, I'll say for that, I don't do a ton of planning there because like you kind of do it and then you maintain it throughout your career, right? You make your little changes here and there, but it's not like I'm revamping for every single wedding my dance playlist, my dance crate, or like my genres or my decades. For me, it's about, I basically split it up into three different things. I have ceremony because like nine times out of 10, I'm doing ceremony. So ceremony, um, I call like what I call reception music. So the formalities, you know, first dance, parent dances, cake cutting, guard bouquet, if they do that, any like anniversary dance, anything like that. And then my third bracket is their um, playlist. So I basically kind of set it up and I'll split it up between like cocktail and dinner and then also um, like the actual dance playlist. So that's where I spend most of my time per wedding. I mean, I can spend anywhere from depending on how it goes and depending on how much information they've given me in our planning meetings, anywhere for about like two to three hours, possibly planning, you know, kind of strategizing, trying to see, hey, what songs do they need? What songs do they want? um where can i fill in the gaps like you said buddy to kind of they give me so much and it's our jobs as professionals to take that blow it up give more songs and kind of give that full-on um vibe that they're expecting so that's kind of my time frame we'll say 
uh, um, really to do it on that uh, that kind of aspect. And that's that to me is an important thing is when you're uh, doing things and you're going through everything. And that's why I like Vibo because Vibo you can actually ask, do you want to? Are you doing a formal scene of the mothers going to the ceremony? And it's yes or no. If no, then nothing else. Cool picture. <laughs> Uh, yeah. if it's, if it's, uh, if, if it's yes, then there's a, a fill in the spot, you know, what song do you want to have, you know, and then you, we, we also talk to them too, find some stuff out and tell them things, tell them about like, you know, vitamin string quartet, you know, there's, you know, groups that you could do instrumentals that, you know, for like pre-ceremony to give you a certain feel. And, you know, when you start seeing, you know, people ask for certain questions, certain songs and you kind of feel get an idea uh, with the ceremony and then again cocktail hour a reception you know re, you know your reception for dance floor you kind of get an idea and you kind of you know you add some more songs in there but ultimately also it works down to when i get to the day when i get to the wedding it's watching during cocktail and uh dinner when i'm playing music this is this is one of the reasons why i don't like spotify i don't use spotify is because i'm trying stuff at dinner and cocktail and I'm seeing what the reaction is of that crowd, because I'm doing it live. And I have, again, I'm lucky that I have Tracy with me. Is she's handling a lot of the administrative stuff, running around talking to the, if a caterer, facility manager, whatever, take care of that. And I'm concentrating on seeing what's going on with the crowd, and that right there is is part of it. But I, I, you know, as far as prepping for a wedding, and you know, how many hours do you guys take? If I have to include everything before a wedding, before I walk into the door, I mean, everything, you're probably, and again, you guys probably are about the same boat I am, at least 10 to 12 hours beforehand, you're meeting with the customer, going for paperwork, you know, going a couple hours on music, you know, getting stuff ready, getting equipment ready, charging up battery, especially up lights and stuff like that. You, you could easily spend 10, 12 hours doing all that stuff. I'll say what I was talking about was strictly music only, though. So maybe I misinterpreted the question. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, I'm saying in general. Sure. I was no, saying, no, it's I'm definitely a lot more. No, no. Music. I, I, think yeah. he, I think he needs more from music side. How many hours you spend on music side? Sure. Okay. But again, you think, and I'm expanding that question a little more, saying that you think about everything you do for a wedding, you know, us as professionals and the guys who are watching and the girls who are watching, uh, we all work very hard at this, and we want to make sure it comes off of very few uh, hitches. Things happen, computers break, speakers break, stuff that we we try to avoid as much as possible. But if you know if something happens, we need to have you know a good recourse to stop it. But if you want to be the the DJ who gets stuff taken care of, being prepared is very important. And again, having that going through that prep. You know, spending a couple hours on music, now he's pulling the special songs, but look at what else you can build upon that a little bit and maybe seeing what works. That helps out a lot. What what, what about you? Uh, what about you, cool thing? What do you usually use, uh, you know, spend time for pre-ceremony or pre-wedding? How much time do you think you do on music prep? I don't really keep track of how long it takes me to prep for a wedding, which I haven't done a wedding in like two years. Almost even, even a party, you get you get stuff together. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah, he, he's at the ten hour mark for all as well. Yeah, and probably a couple hours just for music at least. What about you, Brentley? What about, what 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 about you? How many hours do you think for music? And then how many hours like total you spend? Your your ten twelve area. Easily Stuff ten right? to twelve in the pre work with my weddings. Now, one good thing, especially being work like the one bonus I have or benefit being in a smaller market is most of the folks that are hiring me want me and they know what I do. So a lot of that formality of, you know, do you know how like your first email is kind of like dating to a couple? <laughs> You're trying not to say, I'm lucky that what Celebrations, Cargo and a few of the other venues around here, are, you know, send my way. We've, we've already gone past that. I'm like, what do you need from me for your day of? What kind of setup do you want out of me? And I will pre like screen them to see if I want to be their DJ. My first questions to them are, well, what kind of music do you guys like? What kind of party are you looking to throw for your reception? And if they say we just like a lot of country, I will say I'm the wrong DJ right from the get go. If they want all rock or any one genre specific, I'm going to shy away from it because 
it's definitely, I can do it, but it's not my wheelhouse. I would prefer not to. So that prep time, yeah, there's about 10 hours of, you know, between getting gear ready, going through my checklists, and musically speaking, like, you know, uh, Braylon was saying, we have our crates already kind of pre-mapped out. So for every wedding I'm doing, I've obviously got my ceremony crate. I've got about six different social hour crates, social dinner hour crates, based on, you know, like genre, you know, be it pop, be it country, be it jazz, instrumental jazz, or vocal jazz, and or a straight classical, similar to my, you know, ceremony uh, crates. But then I will also keep, like, spotlight dances and any of those special things in one crate and then the reception in another and then my subsequent crates for filler music around that i've already got fairly well mapped out and because i'm so geeked about you know especially with a recent breakup i'm spending a whole lot more time listening to lots of music and really being a parent, being a parent and reworking my crates i've been with a two and a half month break from weddings I've, I had a prep a lot in December and January for the next two and a half months for just clubs. And every week I'll spend three or four hours a week prepping for my weekend. But with weddings, in addition to the music prep, once I get the convert, like that last conversation with my couple before I'm really delving into all the prep, I will kind of give them a, not the third degree, but I'm going to really poke at their brains. Give me five of your favorite bands. What, what years were you in high school? What were your favorite bands at so I have a really big foundation. So when I take their must playlist, I'm also going, okay, they've made these comments here. I can throw these 50 songs right along with it. And I've already pretty much got a real good ballpark of what to do. So when I'm, you know, making that crate, I see like, you know, Calvin Harris, uh, We Found Love. I see Get a Titanium. I kind of know where I'm going to lean that night and start adding the extra songs with that. Or if I see like Flo Rida Low, Sean Paul Temperature, a lot of Pitbull, I know what we're going in the more urban dance 128 to 130 non-jumpy mix. And I will compliment my crate what you know for that night with that kind of stuff. But definitely a couple of hours. And like you were saying, during dinner hour, I actually have in addition to my crates, I don't like to mix dinner hour. I really want to pay close attention because I'm usually by myself. One to what, you know, venue manager needs out of me, photographers, making sure we're in, you know, in sync for what it's coming up. But I really want to watch my my crowd in front of me and mixing at times, at least during dinner, I think it takes away a little bit from it. So I've made six different, you know, 90 minute long playlists, all different, but that all they are are non-dance song hits. Every song I can think of to make people bop their head. Like Run Around from Blues Traveler, Follow Me from Uncle Cracker, uh, Life's About to Get Good from Shania. They're not dance songs, but they're going to make you do this. And that's. They're, 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 they're the, what I call it's the. It's all about the toe, the toe tappers. You got to get yeah. the toe, toe tap and the chair dance. You're, you're, <laughs> you're sitting in the chair like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting it on a little bit, you know, but you're not exactly. out there actually stand up dancing. Now, now, I'm sure you guys have had it, is during dinner a dance breaks out during dinner and oh yeah it's like okay you know it happens you know these people want to dance they're so bad you know god bless you know let them dance but it's one of the things that when we uh as professionals go and do stuff it's it's it, it, it's interesting because a lot of times um a lot of people usually look at you know what other people are doing and they start seeing other people relax and enjoy themselves. It kind of spreads very quickly. You see people singing along the songs and stuff like that. That's why I don't have a problem with doing like sweet Caroline during dinner, the later half of dinner and having people sing along to it. And then, you know, I, I bump the volume up a little bit and see if I hear people start singing and then bump the volume up a little bit more. I'm not talking about, you know, go full on, but just bump the volume up a little bit more. So they hear that, they hear that beginning part, the guitar getting in there and they're like, oh, wait, sweet Caroline. And you start hearing people, you know, and then they go, bah, bah, bah. You hear that. And, you know, a lot of times I'll turn the volume off so that people do it and turn it back on. And I'll get, if they, they don't do that, I'll get on the microphone. like, come on, guys, you can do this. You guys know the song. Then also the second time around, they're in it more. And I feel that gets people <laughs> much more involved in what's going on. They have more emotional attachment to the wedding. And to me, 
as a DJ, that's my goal to have that emotional attachment to that couple, to that special day that at the end of the night, the couple, their friends, their family, their coworkers, everyone involved there are like, wow, this is fun. You know, and it's even better, and I'm sure you guys probably seen it, is having staff members of the facility either singing along and dancing to songs. Because I had that Friday night, I had a couple of the staff members dancing at the dance floor a little bit to uh, to some having some fun. And they were, you know, walk across the floor with stuff, and all of a sudden they start dancing on the dance floor a little bit, people. And they, you know, for a few seconds, they're having fun. And they're singing, and they're walking off carrying whatever they're carrying. And they're like, you know, enjoying themselves because they're there the whole entire time we're there. And, you know, it makes their life a little easier, simpler, and they have some fun. I think that's great. That that tells you that you are not the typical DJ. You're the atypical DJ. You're something that's different than the one to get in there all the time who just plays the same 40 or 50 or 60 songs over and over again, who brings in the overly large sound <laughs> system that blows everyone away and sounds like Kenny from South Park. That's, you know, not what you want to do. You want to sound, you know, clear, crisp, precise. See, when you said with staff there, the one thing that I shoot for is when I go, like, I'm at Cargill and Celebrations of Lacrosse a lot. But my favorite compliment from any staff member, oh, thank God it's you. If I'm getting that out of them, I am happy If I when I keep going back to these venues. I mean, part and parcel with the COVID explosion of – you know, reschedules and the big boom of, you know, DJs from 500 to 5,000 that you just didn't know what you were getting when you got a DJ. I've heard so many issues at a couple of venues that couples, you know, went to X, Y, or Z, even when the venue said you probably don't want to. I've gotten called. There was one day I got a call from them saying the bride and groom are livid with the DJ they hired. Are you anywhere in the area you can plug into the house system? I'm like, I, I, I happen to be about three blocks away coming back into town. And I'm like, yeah, I got it. So they literally kicked their DJ out and I just plugged in their house and went in. But there's with that era, with that, you know, little time frame, there was a lot of crap going up. People that didn't don't take the time that we do who are doing weddings and don't have the ample skill set or knowledge to, to, to you know, go into it all, devote all their time to it and make it successful. And a lot of that came up in this market between that and I can still remember three companies that were canceling almost every week on couples so much so that I started posting in the DJ group I host up here. All right. Who's free this weekend in case of emergency, we know it's going to happen. And that became a big help for a couple of, you know, for several couples in our area. But that's a big issue that up and down, you don't know what you're getting out of somebody. That's just my two cents on that. That that's that's very very important. So we're I'm going to do a a quick round here, a yes or no question like we did last week, and it's it's a yes or no thing. It doesn't mean you're right or wrong. It doesn't mean anything, but it's a yes or no thing on this question. And uh, he, here's the question: Do you play share believe at a wedding? I do. Cool thing. Share belief, yes or no? No. Okay, no. Braylon. Not once. No? But I know the song. I do know the song, and I okay. like I the, the song, song but not once. <laughs> yeah, I'm like you. I don't. I know the song, but I don't play at a, at a wedding or a party or anything like that. Okay. Braylon? 100% I will. There's a great remix from the Scene Kings that you can get a good verse, chorus, and drop out of. And move on to the next one, but yes, I will. But, but you see, he's only about the short version of it. I'm I all about the short version. <laughs> he's, he's a short version kid. He does three. He does three thousand songs a, you know, a night. So you know. Literally. But the other part of that being, you have to have the right crowd to pull that off. Yes, it's not every wedding. It's not every wedding. No, not if you've got <laughs> that right late '90s crowd that jives to like wannabe and that dancier era of music, like. Uh, Real McCoy, Another Night, and that black box, everybody, you can drop Believe or, in that uh, crowd. Cascada, Every Time We Touch. All right, yes. buddy. I'm going to drop Believe just on behalf of you. I'm going to do it. <laughs> you did the and right gonna... crowd. You did the right crowd to do it. Of course. I'll, I'll do it with my judgment. But I will let you know how it goes. 
and maybe it'll be like a little sprinkle I can do for uh for a future. Well, again, you it always there, it, it always can try. If it doesn't work, you always, you know you can pull out early. But it, we start. Yeah. I always start out right cold, right from the beginning. Regular original. I was like, if you're high, if you're high enough in the BPMs at one point, you can mix it in for like at least the chorus. You and can. Oh, yeah. If you don't but, see people, if everyone does one of these, like a just get out. But I mean, yeah. that that's what. No, but that I want that. I want why I drop that. You know, you're going from one song to high, you know, and also you start they start hearing the beginning because the beginning's kind of soft and slow, and no no drums, no beat. And they hear that and they're like, they, they people. I, I see it all the time. People stop, and they're like confused. This look of confusion goes across their face for a few seconds. They hear it and like. Then I was, oh my God, and I see people rock the dance floor, grab someone, bring them back to the dance floor. I ran that Friday night, you know, and the, the funny thing was about an hour later, a girl comes up, she goes, can you play Belief? I'm like, I did. She goes, no, you didn't. I'm like, yeah. I go, were you here, your Cascada, you know, I saw you on the dance floor, dance the Cascada. I played it Belief before Cascada. And she's like, Oh, that's right. You did. She goes, Oh my God. She goes, I, she goes, I've been drinking too much. She goes, That's it. Water rest of the night. I had the same <laughs> thing, but the song was September. She goes, Can you play Earth, Wind, and Fire? And I said, Well, which song? And she goes, September. And I said, I, I played it three songs ago. And she was like, Oh, <laughs> I was like, Were you not listening? Although like, that's a staple too. I was yeah. like, You'll know when that song's on, but. I wanted to make yeah, sure she wasn't going to come out like out of left field, be like, yeah, play Shining Star. Yeah, play In the Stone. In the Stones, my like, that's actually when I get married, that's going to be my introduction song or the bridal introduction song in, in the Stone. I love that song. Earth, Wind, and Fire. It's totally underrated. That's a good, that's in my good one. Oh, Boogie Wonderland so is another good one. Oh, 100% it is. Yeah. It has me for, for an introduction with the horns like, bah, da, da. oh, yeah. So and then you can also throw in there, you can actually throw some Chicago in there too, because Chicago. Oh, Chicago's great. Yeah. Yeah, because Chicago had that brass sound and stuff like that. Yep, yeah, that's beautiful. Chicago, you know. <laughs> beautiful. Come on. There you go. Come on. <laughs> yeah. There we go. He knows his music. <laughs> remember when Demon Dogs in Chicago, you would, buddy, you'd remember when they had the gold records for Chicago on their wall before they oh, yeah. closed? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the guy worked for the city of Chicago and also was the, uh, he was their manager too. And he would have a guy on with Friday nights and Saturday nights with a tux kind of like escort you in, like a major D kind of feel uh, at Demon Dogs. Yeah, unfortunately that's long gone, Demon Dogs. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, it was always interesting with stuff like that. Now here, let's let's. I want I want to talk a little bit about next week's show. And you guys are watching right now. You guys will hear about it now, because I'm I'm thinking. You know, I I tried to give these guys some little homework oh, and a little Day. five stuff. Oh, next Tuesday's Valentine's Day. Yes, it is. Oh, I was like, I got a hot date, baby. He's like, I got a hot date. <laughs> yeah. He, he, oh man, he's like, two of things I can be here. He's got he's got a date. Oh man. He's got three That's dates. He's got to fit in, right? Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe you can come in. You can bring 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 I'll, I'll with. I'll be here next week. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we'll see how this Saturday goes because I'm uh, one of the companies in town that does Bargo Adult, you know, Toy Bingo is doing a singles night, and I'm working the breakup booth. And because I'm recently single, I'm getting auctioned off at the end of the night. Oh, tough. <laughs> oh God, I don't know what I've signed myself up for, but after that, I have to run to my gig, which is like a mile away. So I get auctioned off to possibly what could be a nightmare, and they have to think about it the rest of the night in the booth. All right, you guys send me information. I'm gonna start sending money in, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna buy you. I'll save, I'll save you, bro. I'll save well, you. Let's all do it. No, let's let's chip in a little. Yeah, bit. let's chip in. <laughs> chip in. We'll save him. We'll call it the save. <laughs> well, I mean, I may not need saving. I may not need saving. Well, uh, again, we'll. we'll <laughs> you you got you got our numbers you can you can text us real quickly and say yeah, hey Lee. i need help it's going bad all. help <laughs> yeah <laughs> dj adrian e says let us know how much we'll get you see you got you got <laughs> fans even saying that they're going to chip in and help out make sure you're protected we got your back <laughs> so yeah. here's your homework between now and next week's show here's the thing we're going to talk about one of the things we're going to talk about which is the thing that I have coming up, uh, not this coming weekend, but next weekend. 
wedding shows. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it at that. And then I'll post some questions next time, next episode, next show about wedding shows. And I know cool thing. You don't do usually do wedding shows, but mm -hmm. I ask you how you prepare when you talk to customers instead, but you know, that's no big deal, but you guys, uh, you know, I know you have, I do them all the time, uh, wedding shows and we got, you know, people watch, and hopefully, cool thing, you may learn some things. And maybe you, one of the days you do a wedding show, you, you got you got a leg up on everyone else. Yeah. All right. So with that said, if you haven't done so already, make sure you click that like button on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you go to everyone else's uh, social media. Follow them. Like them. You know, and again, if you're here tonight live, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being part of the DJ Roundtable. Thanks for all the questions and comments. And again, we got to make sure that next, you know, week, if again, if, if the alert comes out, I will, I know some of these people here, I will send an alert to you saying we need to save, we need to save our fellow DJ from the pit of disparity. I'm hoping it's good. I'm hoping it's a great night. And yeah, well, hopefully, but it's like, I live in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Yeah. But again, I want to thank you guys all live here on the Twitter, on, on, on Twitch. I'm saying Twitter. Oh, God. On Twitch, I don't even know where I'm at now. <laughs> You're live here on Twitch. I appreciate you guys. You guys have a good night, and thanks so much for stopping by. Peace.